Let's welcome in our co-hosts, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap. John, good morning to you. Good morning to you, sir. A little disappointed in the shirt selection uh, the last couple times I've seen you. It's, not gonna lie. it's the station shirt. It's I'm wearing the uniform. It's not the Hawaii shirt, though. Well, no. Well, those are going to go away. As the weather gets colder, it's going to just kind of get boring sweaters. Well, I need, don't have the Cosby sweaters. You need to get the Cliff Huxtable sweaters. Yeah. Then, <laughs> I had them. Yeah. Who didn't yeah. back in the day, right? Also, the Hall of Famer, Matt Miller. Good morning, Matty. Good morning. I also didn't know there was a moratorium on, you know, Hawaiian shirts after a certain date. I thought you could wear them year-round. You wear shorts year-round. Most people actually dress for the seasons. <laughs> the dude is a polar bear. I don't know how he does yep. it. The coldest football game I ever called. He's standing there outside on the stands in shorts. The stands were covered with ice. He's wearing shorts. They were insulated shorts, but they, they were still yes. shorts. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Hey, uh, thanks uh, for being with us today on the program. And uh, this is uh, this uh, fine day here is the nexus of uh, the universe. It's uh, 12 hours exactly of sunlight and uh, 12 hours of uh, nighttime. So uh, sunrise, sunset today. Exact same time, a.m. and p.m. Does After that last this, only one day, or just maybe just one, and then it then it tips again. the other way? Hmm. You know, you start getting that. Now it's more than twelve hours of darkness and less than twelve hours of sunlight. Well, I already notice it because mornings like this, I usually try to get up in time to get out with the dogs at about six thirty, get in my walk, and then by seven start getting ready so I can be here by eight. And the last couple of weeks, the alarm goes off at six thirty, and I'm like, it is still pretty dark. Mm -hmm. And then you go outside with the dogs and go. I don't know how much walking we're getting done this morning, especially today with the clouds and the rain. It was like, now nah, we'll wait till later. Uh, November 5 is when we uh, fall back, turn the clocks uh -huh. back one hour. So it's still some time before that. November, that late? Yep, November huh? 5. It's always right after Halloween. It used to be before Halloween, I thought. I think they changed it. It was part of an omnibus spending bill. They snuck of it in there. Of course it was. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> <laughs> Where else do you put daylight savings time? <laughs> put in a spending snuck bill. Snuck it right in there. <laughs> Our guest in this segment is Delegate Chuck Hurst. Ch duck. Uh, duck. <laughs> duck, good morning to you there. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Glad to be here. You ever um, been called duck before? Um... No, I don't think. Many other names, but I don't think, I don't think it's been called Duck. <laughs> we have a kid on our football team whose nickname is Duck. Of all the stupid reasons we call Duck is because his sister went to Oregon University, and they're the Ducks. So for some reason, his nickname became Duck. And uh, anyway, you have a, a friend out there somewhere who also goes by Duck. Actually, when I was a kid, there was a, there was a, a kid that uh, his nickname was Duck. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, I don't even remember his actual name any longer. I just remember him by Duck. It's, it's, it should be a good nickname for people who are cool under pressure but get a lot done because the Duck is the epitome of the water rolls off the back, you look calm above the surface, but below the surface you're working like crazy, right? That should be a good nickname for people. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, Chuck, uh, yesterday you were commenting on our Facebook uh, comment section in regards to some discussions we were having with school security. And uh, those who would like to see teachers have the ability to be armed. And I think there's some great misconceptions out there about what a bill like that would look like. I think people are assuming that it would mean every teacher would go into school packing. And it'd be like, you know, shoot out the OK Corral Wild West fears. <laughs> but even in talking with Sheriff Nate Harmon, that's not how that's going to look in reality if it does come to fruition. No, no. Um, and, and I am a co-sponsor of the bill. Delegate uh, Smith is the lead sponsor. He's been working on it. Actually, I think he started working on it his uh, first term. Um, he's been he he came in when I did. Um, <clears throat> I think it's uh, twenty five forty nine is the bill number, and it's it's permissive. Mm -hmm. It allows the school districts <clears throat> that they could that they can allow this. Um, it requires. A concealed carry permit for the teacher to have a concealed carry permit. It requires additional training. Um, it requires that the firearm always stays in their possession, so no putting it in a desk or laying it somewhere. Uh, so uh, I guess that's the safety aspects of it. Um, and I think there was a limit on the number of teachers that would be possible. And, of course, it would be the teachers volunteering that mm -hmm. would want to do it. Uh, it wouldn't be forcing anybody whatsoever. Um, I'm, I'm just trying, I'm trying to remember sure. the, the, the high points of it. Um, 
Uh, like I said, it was permissive. Any idea what the number of teachers would be capped at? Is it is it per is it a per pupil ratio or just flat out number of teachers in a school? I think it was a flat out number of teachers in the school. I, I want to say it was four, and and I'm not sure the latest draft of it if if that language is still actually in this draft. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going back, you know, the past couple years of of uh, and, and and the draft has changed some over the last few years. So I'm, I I don't recall whether that exact language is still in the bill or not. And, and discussing this with <clears throat> Sheriff Nate Harmon, who I believe is on the show tomorrow, uh, this would be a scenario whereby it wouldn't be known to everybody in the school who those particular teachers were. Is that still part Co of the bill? Yes, correct. Uh, nobody's going to know other than, I guess, the principal. Uh, and the uh, di school district is required to let Homeland Security know and uh, that is to be able to let uh, local law enforcement know which teachers are carrying it, it that way if there is an incident and law enforcement is you know into this going into the school that they that they have some idea of, of who the good guy is and and possibly who's not i know this bill isn't completely finished in terms of its uh, written version to be able to be voted on I, I imagine there'll still be some tweaking of this that takes place but how thorough would the vetting be of the people who apply for this well right off the bat <clears throat> you're talking about concealed carry permits so they're they're vetted right there by law enforcement mm -hmm. uh, as far as uh, not being felon uh, drug issues uh, basically all the stuff that normally goes along with buying a gun or uh, getting a concealed carry permit so they're vetted right there through law enforcement um, and then of course they're required to have additional training as well I don't recall exactly what that that entailed but there was additional training that that they're required to have um because this this wouldn't be and john served as a first responder uh so going to a a target practice area and shooting without duress is one thing but a live shooter that involves duress stress lives on the line so this would have to be a much more involved training than just go there and take a few shots in the parking lot at the target Yes, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain that it is. I think, if I recall correctly, it was a training that was, I believe it was that the sheriff, uh, sheriff's department would come up with the training for, for, for that. Mm -hmm. So that would, uh, that would put, put the ball right in Nate, Nate Harmon's lap right now, since he's the current sheriff. Uh, but if if I recall correctly, that's that's what the, that's how the training was to take place. It was to be something that is uh, done by the sheriff's department. And the odds of this bill coming up for discussion in January? Um, I think fairly good. Uh, there's there's quite a number of delegates that I, I believe support it. Um, I, I think uh, generally speaking, most people want to see more secure schools, and um, Another big thing, I think I commented on the Facebook post yesterday, that um, usually what stops these shootings when there's a mass shooting or a school shooting taking place is pretty much always a good guy with a gun. And quite often, the shooting ends by the shooter's own hand, mm -hmm. uh, at least a high percentage of them. John? To me, <clears throat> it just makes sense. We're in a constitutional carry state which means you don't have to have a concealed carry permit to carry a gun in your pocket or wherever you want to have one. To have the concealed carry permit is an extra step and the additional training. And we have a recognized problem. We have, we have a perceived problem. I don't know how real it actually is in this area, but we want to have secure schools. And now we're looking at spending millions of dollars to bring in school resource officers. Is that what they're called? School resource officers, I think, SRO? Yeah, I think it's one of the terms, yeah. And if, in fact, you can have willing faculty who are, you know, a lot of people have been lifelong shooters, right? And it, it just makes sense to me that, that this should, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. Now, my question to you is, within the bill, the proposed bill, is there a duty to confront? Or is is this, if they are armed and if, if they so choose, they can stop the shooter? Or with this, does there come a, a responsibility to confront a shooter? I do not believe there's any duty uh, 
to 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 react or, or to, to to go after a shooter. I don't think there's any I don't think there's any language whatsoever that that is going to mandate that a teacher grab their gun and go running down the hallway after a shooter. Um, and I probably wouldn't recommend that myself. I don't think. Well, here's where <coughs> my my son was at Virginia Tech during the Virginia Tech shootings. He lost some friends, but he was okay. And the way that played out, I mean, the nightmare of it is the guy locks the doors and he just went room to room shooting people. He had one pistol and he went and, and just, and anybody who could have shot back could have stopped that slaughter. But nobody could because the guns were not allowed in, in the school. But apparently, you know, the bad guys don't pay attention to it. Um, the resistance you get is it people who are afraid of firearms in general or is resistance have to do with teachers going crazy or what is the resistance i think generally the resistance are those that don't care so much for firearms i believe uh i, I think that's probably the biggest part of it um they just many people just have this ingrained fear uh probably from watching news all the time and you see uh you know, when, when we have a mass shooting or, or a school shooting, it's just over and over and over 24-7 for probably a week. You know, it just it just gets ingrained into people's heads. And um, and, it, and, it, and it builds a fear, uh, you know, may, maybe not necessarily justified, but it does build a fear in many people. Um, and, and one of the best ways to take liberty from anybody is fear. Fear, fear will make people uh, react. The, it, fear will make, will definitely get a reaction. Whether it's a good, a positive, or a negative, fear will cause a reaction. Well, what's the old? If it bleeds, it leads. I mean, the most most major media outlets have been built around fear for a long, long time. Oh, I, I have another little story. I'll, I'll just tell you really quick. Uh, Delegate Phillips. Uh, a few years ago, and I, I don't recall exactly when it was, but he talks about it quite often. Uh, there was a, uh, a, a shooter at his son's school, and uh, he talks about how horrified he was, and, and especially afterwards, once he learned what took place, there was nobody there at the school that could confront a, a, a shooter, and the teacher of that class took his son and the other biggest uh, student there and had them stand on one side of the doorway while the teacher stood on the other side of the doorway and told them that if he comes through the door one of you take him low one take high and I'll try to get the gun from him uh, Delegate Phillips would definitely much rather know that the teacher was standing there with a handgun in her hand to uh, defend the students than a book or barehanded relying on students to tackle the, the assailant Matt Miller. I'm just still trying to take that whole thing in and imagine, you know, how, how you do that. Was this an elementary or a middle or high school? I, I think it know? was high school. High school. I think it was high school. Wow. I get the idea then. It sounds as though uh, for a teacher who does have that weapon, who is armed, that potentially it's a lock the door and now that teacher is ready to protect that class should an intruder come directly to that door. I, 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 I could see that being a scenario. I could also see possibly a teacher maybe going towards the right. shooter to some degree. And that would depend on the, probably the individual, perhaps their training, what they felt was going on. Um, and, and many times you're probably not going to know, nobody's probably going to know their actual reaction in right. a situation like that until they're faced with it. I mean, I, I, I believe I know what I would do, how I would react. But I can't say with certainty until I would be placed in that situation. You mentioned earlier a, a principal or administration would know along with Homeland Security. Would other armed teachers know? In other words, could there even be a coordinated effort if, if say, five teachers within a school were armed, they knew it, they went through the certification classes, could there even be a concerted effort amongst them to say, look, if we understand the intrusion is in this part of the school, I'll respond here, you go here, you protect your students, or, or would that be a little – am I not taking the scenario too far? I'm not, I'm not sure that the bill actually addresses that. Okay. Uh, I don't recall the bill actually addressing that, uh, although I guess to some degree that would make some sense. Yeah. 
As far as teachers, are there certain teachers that have come to you and expressed a desire to have this bill, or at least now that they know that bill is out there, have you gotten support from certain teachers? I have seen teachers that support it. I've seen teachers talk about uh, supporting it, that it would be a good idea. And probably a bigger majority, I'd, I'd say a, a, a larger portion that are against it. Right. Um, and. I don't know why they're against it exactly necessarily. Probably other than just just fear of firearms. Probably I suspect is is the large driving factor in it. How about administrations, whether it be principals or school boards or superintendents? Has there been a pushback, even from a legal standpoint, that they don't want additional legal ramifications depending on the outcome of a situation? Um. I, I guess I've seen some pushback uh, of, you know, some school principals that probably don't like the idea. Um, and then again, this whole thing is permissive. Right. You know, it, no, nobody will be forced. Uh, and, and in fact, if a school district is going to do it, they have to hold a public hearing beforehand. So the, the public would be able to be involved, voice their opinions as well. We mentioned earlier school resource officers. Would there be a chance that there would still be, say, an armed teacher within a school where there is a resource officer, or would that be a part of it to say, no, you have a resource officer, it would now maybe not be permitted? I do not recall the bill okay. uh, specifying that one way or the other. Delegate Chuck Hurst, our guest here on the program from the 95th. Chuck, let's flip the page a little bit, and uh, before... Brad wakes up and hooks up the antenna to the top of the telephone pole in Back Creek Valley to get the station signal. Um, maybe you can address the biggest question on his mind each day when you are on the program. Okay. Is there going to be a free okay. access shooting range? About, about a week and a half ago, I texted the director and the previous director because he has also uh, told me to feel free to contact him because he, uh, he still is on as some sort of an advisor. I texted both of them to see what's going on, and um, uh, previous director McDaniels, he texted me back, said he did not know where we stood yet right now on it. He would check into it and get back with me. I have not heard back yet. I did talk to biologist uh, for District 2, and she is aware that there's an effort ongoing for the range she was not 100 percent sure exactly where it was at this point she thought that it was in engineering um i i expect to find out here in the very near future um and perhaps maybe i'll go a little higher up the food chain next mm -hmm. so uh, i'm still working on it i'm still optimistic um i'm just terribly saddened that it takes so long yeah why does it take so long Government, I guess. <laughs> that's that's what was explained to me early on. Government uh -huh. moves slowly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite satisfied with that explanation. Even because, with Republicans in charge, it seems to move slowly. Uh, my, my problem with it is uh, come February, it would be four years since the conversation started. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I think we need to get to a point to where uh, we can say, yeah, this is what's going on. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the process, we're putting it out to bid or or something where, where we see positive movement going on. Go ahead, John. I want to get back to the school thing. Um, <clears throat> there's an address, some of the stuff that's, that's going on the Facebook page right now. This might sound a little like a rant, but there's actually a question at the end of it. It seems to me <clears throat> we've had this drumbeat of, of fear about school shootings. They're, they're relatively rare, but they make the news. They should make the news, and, and it instills fear both in parents as well as students and therefore into school administrators. And for years, we've talked about run, hide, fight. That's what you're, you're given the opportunity to, to avoid a mass shooting, you run first. If you can't run, then you hide and as a last resort, you fight. We don't train that. We train kids to go hunker in a corner of their schoolroom. We're not pushing them out the windows and such, right? We're training to, to hunker in the corner of a schoolroom to make the smallest, most compact target you can possibly form. And then once they're found, it's, it, they're, they're, it's terrible. I mean, it's just... It, it, it just a completely predictable, horrible result. What we don't train, especially at the high school level, this is a bad thing. This is not something anybody wants to address. But why aren't we teaching the fighting part? You know, it's if you, we got these big kids, what you were talking about with, with the, mm -hmm. the, the delegate, why aren't we teaching that? You, you 
you coach some really big high school football players. If we're going to accept on principle that this is a big problem, then we have to address the problem in a meaningful way. And firearms are part of that. But then so is a meaningful commitment to fight these people back. Resistance is is really all it takes. When these folks do take care of themselves in most of these these circumstances, it's it, at the moment of first resistance is where they kill themselves. So if... What's your question, Senator? Don't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I basically agree. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not against the run-hide fight either. Uh, you know, if you have a place to run to, a secure way to run or a secure place to hide, I'm not, I'm not against that, especially for, for kids in school. Um, and, and put fight as the last option. But, yes, uh, fight should be there. Um, there. I think, as you was pointing out, to be uh, huddled down in a corner and that's your last option. Uh, Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's just not good. I mean, uh, it, 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 at that point, huddled down in the corner and the shooter steps up, I guess. Uh, personally, me, I think I'd, I'd make a lunge at the shooter and take – my chance, because the other option is not good mm. at all. You're choosing among very bad options. Mm -hmm. None of the options are good. So, yeah, the the, the best option is 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 uh, uh, a, a, method, a method of protection. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, a lot of people fear guns or anything, but, but when we think about it. We have more stuff in play right now that limits and restricts people from guns than we ever had before. Background checks is relatively new. 1993, I think, is when background checks started. Uh, so, so, so the question I always find myself asking is, why do we have this problem now when we didn't have it back in 1980? What's changed? Um, and to me, it, it, people's changed. Society's mm -hmm. changed. Uh, morals or lack of. Uh, so, long term, we probably need to get on some other better track as far as uh, teaching morals, teaching standards, I guess. Um, because until that happens, I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think we get to a point where anything's ever good. Um, and it, it, and if you're if you're talking about a, a mass shooter or a school shooter, if if it's just a school shooter, if it's somebody that is that has an issue with the school and they're, and they're there, okay. That, that would be it. But if it's somebody that just wants to go out in a blaze of glory, so to speak, if the schools are secure, what happens next? They'll find a target that's not secure. So uh, even with secure schools, for those type shooters, um, you just change the target probably. Uh, so You do. Uh, and as we know from 9-11 and other incidents if somebody is motivated and willing to spend their own life to do what they want to do it's difficult to stop that person and uh, there's no way around that there just isn't so how do you cope with it how do you deal with it how do you defend yourself from it those are the questions that we have to answer mm -hmm. and I don't think anybody takes a job at a school with the thought in mind that when I go there, I could die. When I go to the school, I have to bring my weapon with me so I can survive in case. I don't think anybody ever took a teaching job thinking that that was one of the scenarios they had to encounter. And I know when I went to school, I never thought for a second, other than the fact that the fight you'd get into in school with other kids, I never thought for a second that my life was in danger when I would go to school. But today, that has to be a concern and we have to deal with it in some way. And there's the long-term ways of dealing this with, with uh, mental health and uh, the, the care of people who need it. And that takes time and a lot of money, and that's not an overnight solution. So what can I do today to defend myself? What can I do today to make sure when my kid goes to school that they're safe? Hardening the schools is part of that option, making sure that nobody can just get into a school as easily as some have in the past to do these things. Resource officers, I think, are something that we really need to consider when we set our budgets. Should every school, or at least every campus, where we have some schools like uh, Spring Mills where you've got a campus setting, should every campus have a resource officer? 
And there's going to be people who are going to post on Facebook, well, this school had a resource officer, and it still happened. Well, nothing's perfect. Mm -hmm. Nothing's ever guaranteed. All you can do is put yourself in the best situation. That's all you can ask for in those situations. There is no perfect example. There's no perfect uh, solution to this. It's a little bit here and a little bit there. And if this is part of that solution, it may anger some people. It, it may cause some people to stop teaching. But I'd like to know that if someone's coming at me with a weapon, that I at least have the freedom to choose that I have a weapon on me to be able to defend myself. Will it work every single time? No. But I'd at least like to have the option. With that in mind, Chuck, you mentioned earlier uh, when Rob asked about, you know, would, would this particular bill get into discussion, um, where this bill is right now, chances of it going through this next legislative session are probably slim to none. It's going to take more time to kind of hash this out? Well, um, I mean, the bill is drafted. Okay. <clears throat> and I, I'm pretty certain it's going to be reintroduced. I don't know if it would be changed any or not to be reintroduced. Um so really the next step is a committee hearing to hash it out in committee. Uh, that would be the next step. And um, I, I think it's possible that it, that it gets to that point. Chuck, thanks for coming in, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Delegate Chuck Kirst from the 95th.